Coming up on Naperville News 17, some movement on the Fifth Avenue front as council addresses the project. We salute our vets hearing stories from local women who serve. And some sitcom stumpers as contestants compete in NCTV 17's Game On. Hello everyone, I'm Kim Pierce. Thanks for joining us for this week's Naperville News. City Council discussed the future of Fifth Avenue at their latest meeting. Naperville News 17's Casey Krajewski tells us what they came up with. When Naperville City Council voted in October to deny Ryan Company's baseline concept for the Fifth Avenue redevelopment project, it put the future of the 13.1 acre site on hold. At the most recent council meeting, city staff presented six options for what to do next. More than 30 public speakers also weighed in on the issue. I think it's really important that the direction that you give as council members is to put some goals in front of the steering committee so that they can then assess whatever is, is come up with about how it does in fact meet those goals. Most speakers endorsed either option three, a city council workshop to define goals for the project, or option four, incorporating the discussion into citywide priorities in early 2020. Council seemed to agree and eventually settled on the workshop. If we're going to do that, I would hope that we continue to have these conversations with neighbors, that neighbors continue to have conversations amongst themselves so that we don't show up at a workshop in two months or a month, whenever it might be, and just sort of flounder about and, and see who likes what of this part of the project. Though the project has been contentious at times since developer Ryan Companies first began public outreach two years ago, multiple council members said they were pleased by the amount of people who do want the project to move forward. I was very encouraged tonight by the majority of everyone still wanting to continue this and down this path and, and figure it out. You know, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of work to be done to get there. But from what I heard tonight, it sounds like everybody's prepared to roll up their sleeves and, and get there. The council workshop will likely be scheduled for January of 2020. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Casey Krajewski. City Council also addressed the recent incident of racial discrimination at a Naperville Buffalo Wild Wings. On October 26th, a group of 18 people of multiple ethnicities were asked by staff to move tables to accommodate a regular customer who did not want to sit by black people. After repeated attempts by staff to get the group to move, they decided to take their business elsewhere. The staff members involved have since been fired. Several public speakers spoke out against that incident, but said more than disavowing the events is needed to make a difference. Yes, it's nice to hear your comments, but there has to be a call of action behind it to make change. Councilman Dr. Benny White offered one option. Personally, I believe our diversity is our strength. I ask my colleagues on the council to join me in supporting that the city of Naperville add language around diversity and inclusion in its mission statement. That idea was supported by a unanimous show of hands from the council at the end of the meeting. Councilman White hosts regular meetings with a group called Naperville Neighbors United. He said this incident will be discussed at their next meeting on November 20th which all are invited to. The Historic Preservation Committee recently voted to allow Little Friends to demolish their campus except for the Crayler Mansion. Our own Christian Kenazal went on an exclusive tour of the building and shows us what it looks like inside. From the outside, Crayler Mansion doesn't look all that different from when Peter Crayler built it in the early 1900s. The inside of the former Naperville mayor and furniture magnate's home is now outfitted for Little Friends High School. A total of 19 rooms are in the historic mansion. This one, believed to be once the living room, is now used as a classroom. Some bedrooms are now therapy areas, and the former dining room is now an office. We do incredible work with what we have, but we could do so much better and we could provide a, a, so many more opportunities if we had the right environment. And so to that extent, that's part of what we're trying to make happen. Upstairs on the second floor, there are some remnants of the past. Bathrooms still have bathtubs and original tiles, but plumbing for the showers doesn't work and parts of the areas are deteriorating. Also on the floor is where you'll find Crayler's old bedroom. 
So it looks like um, this appeared to be the master suite. So this was the master restroom um, dressing area and the previous classroom that we were in appeared to be what was the master bedroom. Just outside the master bathroom is a safe, which has never been opened by little friends. We have actually no idea what's behind that. And uh, at some point before we, uh, if we're able to, to uh, tear the home down, we would absolutely make sure that we opened that up and found if there was anything in there. But at this point, we have absolutely no idea what's behind that safe. The Historic Preservation Commission voted to allow demolition on every building on Little Friends campus, except for the mansion. A structural analysis and feasibility report by Fonsworth's group estimated that turning the mansion into a single-family home would cost around $90,000. Little Friends did their own report and say estimated renovations would be near $4 million. The Fonsworth report cites plumbing, a new kitchen, and a garage as primary costs. But Little Friends says there are other concerns that need to be addressed, HVAC, electrical, and plumbing issues. Right, if we relocated uh, the home on the site to another location, we would build a new foundation. If we kept it here, we would have to do significant uh, waterproofing and damp proofing of this basement because you can see it was a brick basement down to a concrete ledge and it continuously seeps water. Little Friends has appealed the HPC's decision and hopes to present to City Council on November 19th. For Naperville News 17, I'm Christian Canizal. The Regency Inn will soon get an overhaul. Naperville News 17's Christine Lena has the details. The Planning and Zoning Commission gave unanimous approval of the rezoning and variances for the Regency Inn to allow it to become a micro apartment building. According to our research, over 40% of Naperville's rental or renter population is considered rent burdened, which means that they're spending more than 30% of their annual income on rent and utilities. As such, the proposed community addresses this growing concern by providing an attainable rental opportunity, which will then preserve and enhance our population base. It's a total restoration of the current building on East Ogden Avenue that converts the existing 123 hotel rooms into 112 300 square foot studio apartments. They'll be geared toward recent college graduates, millennials and seniors. The uplift is something residents say they're eager to see. Naperville needs to be involved in this movement as a leader and innovator in the affordable housing market. And the commission agreed, seeing it as an opportunity to further develop the East Ogden Avenue corridor, something the city has been working on over the years. From a land use perspective, I mean, this is exactly the type of out-of-the-box thinking that we need to see more in Naperville, because I, I do think this type of a project can actually help enhance a lot of the businesses potentially that are around here. Now the proposal goes to Naperville City Council for final approval. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Christine Lena. If and when the micro apartments are approved by council, their construction would take six to eight months to complete. After the break, District 204 considers whether board members should be compensated. We live in a safe community, but not a crime-free community. If you see something, say something. Be a Naperville Crime Stopper. NCTV17.com is the best place for you to stay up to date on your neighborhood happenings. Get your local news and sports all on the go by signing up for our daily news update. Naperville Community Television, keeping you informed. At the latest District 204 meeting, school board members discussed a resolution that would allow for them to be paid. It's one of 18 proposals in front of the Illinois Association of School Boards, which would allow school districts the authority to offer compensation to board members. Kathy Peel, who's been a board member since 2008, and Justin Karubis, the current vice president of the board, said compensation would incentivize more candidates to run. Any compensation would end up being minuscule to the amount of time that's, that's placed in. Um, but we want to expand the pool of people that can 
be school board members and not just those with su sufficient means. Lori Donahue agreed with Karubis that the compensation wouldn't be enough to live on, but doesn't want money to be the main reason people run. I really want to see people involved with running for school boards who are doing it, not because they're going to get some money for it, but because they really care about the kids in the district. The majority of the board agreed with Donahue, voting 5-2 in favor of not supporting board members being compensated. District 204 will present their stance on IASB's resolutions at the Joint Annual Conference on November 22nd through the 24th. With leaves on the ground and the weather getting colder, yard work is getting harder. But that didn't stop Ecolab from partnering with the Naperville Park District to give back to the community. Recently, Ecolab employees volunteered their time to help the Naperville Park District keep Wildflower Park on Aurora Avenue green and clean. So today we're spending two hours out of our day helping plant tulips here in Wildflower Park. Our team here, we're planting some tulips and then we have another group helping out laying some mulch and then we have another set of group going around picking up litter and kind of beautifying the area. The tulip bulbs planted by the group will bloom in the springtime. But the cleaning of litter focus on sustainability and team bonding is something that can be appreciated all year long. I mean, part of our um, value as a company is really focused on sustainability. The other good thing is it gets everyone out of the office for a couple of hours. It's the end of the quarter, end of the month, so everyone's, my looking, forward. Mind. <laughs> everyone's looking forward to a bit of a break. It's all for the purpose of helping out and giving back to Naperville. This is an opportunity for us to do something that's bigger than ourselves. It's really important for you, know, you to give back to the community where you live and work. Veterans Day is almost here, so we spoke with some local female vets about their service. Naperville News 17's Asia Ashley Hausa tells us their stories. Our veterans are always on our minds. And with Veterans Day coming up, it's a time to celebrate the sacrifices they make. We're taking a look at local female vets and their journeys serving their country. Nadia Rios joined the Marines when she was 18 years old in 1998. I am an immigrant. So for me, it just became of, um, I was very thankful to be in this country and how can I give back? And she specifically chose the Marines because? There were the one branch that told me I couldn't be a Marine because I was too short. So it was like, for me, it was like a challenge. I've never been told you can't do something. She proved herself by going to every training session and working hard during the initial strength test, or IST, every other month just to get to boot camp. Word got around that there was this tiny little girl who wanted to join the Marine Corps. And I, unknown to me, I, I wanted those ITSs. There was a general watching me and did not know. Apparently he liked the fact that I beat everybody there. And once she was in, she served for six years. In 2008, Tracy Collins was a deputy J-4 for Task Force Phoenix. When she deployed to Afghanistan for a year, she left behind a five and a half year old and a one and a half year old, changing her family dynamic. Back here, you know, my husband, especially being a husband, <laughs> um, it was very challenging for him. We had to have a full time nanny, you know, having young kids. He had to be not only the father, but the mother. Now 28 years in, Collins is a colonel in the Army Reserves. She admits that at times it was difficult to be one of the very few women in the room, but it also motivated her. When I do speak, everyone's going to look. Everyone's going to listen, so I better know what I'm talking about. I better be 110% sure of what I'm going to say. So there always is that pressure, but it pushes me to do better. Jennifer Sloan believes that even though sometimes there's apprehension when a woman wants to join, there is progress being made. Well, men always had to do pull-ups. Women would do the flexed arm hang. And then, um, I want to say it was like 2014, 2015, they finally changed over to all Marines have to do pull-ups regardless of gender. It didn't matter how old you were or your gender. When 9-11 struck, it motivated everyone. Sloan knew from a young age that she wanted to be a Marine. I was in eighth grade when September 11th happened. Um, and, you know, when you're 12 or 13 years old, you don't really understand why it happened or what caused it. But I know that I was really angry about it, that uh, we were attacked, innocent people were killed because of it. That drive has still kept her going, and she is now a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps Reserve. Both Sloan and Rios also serve as American Legion Post 43 board members in Naperville. And their advice for any woman looking to serve? You can do this. It's not impossible, but it is hard. 
And once you're in it, it's what you make it. If you want to be that go-getter, be that go-getter. Go for it. If Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Aisha Ashley Hausa. And this Veterans Day, we say thanks to all our vets for their service. Coming up, a senior ride service celebrates their 2,000th trip. Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. Business Connection is really good PR for us to get our names out there because we're new. One year later, um, my business has increased tremendously this year, so I really appreciate that I had the opportunity to interview on Business Connection. So tell me a little bit about your law firm. I talked to some friends. They said it was great for their business, and so I did it, and it was great. I've seen a lot of calls and emails gotten a lot of traction on Facebook. I actually have one client. The reason he agreed to meet with me was because he watched the video on the website. That right there made it worth doing. And so I recommend it to people all the time that if they don't have a video, they need to do a video and they need to do it with the NCTV 17. Congratulations go to Naperville Central's student-run newspaper for receiving a national recognition. The Central Times has earned the Columbia Scholastic Press Association's Crown Award, making it just one of three from the state to get the honor. They're not just high school students, they're journalists. And, and I always say to them at the beginning of the year, we're not a high school newspaper, we're a newspaper run by high school students. And I, I, I really believe that. The young journalists received the recognition for their hybrid print and online publications from the 2018-2019 school year. They're one of 97 chosen from over 1,100 eligible newspapers. I think that like being able to kind of be in competition or compare our newspaper against the newspapers of other schools in the country is like a rare opportunity and a really cool one as well. This is the fourth Crown Award for hybrid news that the Central Times has earned since 2015, while also having over a dozen crowns under their belt for print alone. They'll find out whether they won a silver or gold designation in the spring of 2020. Around this time every year, the Naperville Park District reminds residents that a little change goes a long way. The Pennies for Pies initiative is back. The Park District is collecting loose change leading up to Thanksgiving to purchase pies to donate to families in need. For our penny, Pennies for Pies initiative, we'd like to, uh, to try to raise enough funds to purchase uh, about 120 pies. That's what we were able to do last year uh, that then are donated to Loaves and finish, Fishes to benefit the, uh, the families that are putting together their Thanksgiving dinners. Residents can drop spare change in collection jars located in all Park District facilities, including the Administration Building, Alfred Rubin Riverwalk Community Center, the Fort Hill Activity Center, and more. The pies will be purchased and delivered to Loaves and Fishes on November 22nd. A local church has taken on a new leader. It's just been an incredibly warm welcome from the congregation. It's been uh, overwhelming. Mark Carlson has taken over as lead pastor at Good Shepherd Church on 75th Street after spending the last 16 years living in Sweden. Carlson, who is half Swedish, half American, went to seminary in the Chicago area and said, it's always felt like home here. He's excited to bring some of the things he's learned in Sweden to his new congregation in America. One of the things that I found in Sweden is that there's less and less knowledge about what the faith is all about. And I think America is actually becoming more like Europe in that sense. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's exciting to think about, you know, applying some of those things that we learned in, in Europe and in Sweden to, uh, to how things are, are developing in, in our country, too. Bringing a new voice to the vocation. Carlson says one of the things he likes about Good Shepherd is the two different worshiping styles, the more formal sanctuary services, and then the relaxed preaching in the worship center. Ride Assist Naperville just marked a milestone with a drive. Our own Christine Lena tells us more about it. As you get older, you're, you're uh, less independent. I know my wife, was one of her objections was moving here. 
was, I don't want to lose my independence. And one way Bob and his wife gained back some of that independence was through Ride Assist Naperville. The nonprofit provides dependable transportation for seniors in the greater Naperville area to get to and from medical appointments. I get to meet a lot of new interesting people who have a lot to share with me. You know, it's pretty smooth and easy. You just call them up, show up, drive them to the doctor and um, wait and then come back. I get to read lots of library books, <laughs> so it works. Williams has been a volunteer with RAND since its inception over two and a half years ago. The drivers are, that we've met so far are all very positive and make you feel good, particularly Robin. She's just like a good friend. So what are you guys going to do for Thanksgiving? You got Thanksgiving plans set up or are you going to just stay around Monarch Landing? And her drive with Bob marks the program's 2000th. You know, Bob, Bob is a great writer. He's very uh, with it. He's always on time and very pleasant. RAN is designed for seniors 60 and over who can no longer drive themselves. And the only cost is a requested $12 donation per round trip ride. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Christine Lena. If you or someone you know is interested in becoming a rider or a driver for Ride Assist Naperville, you can check out their website for more details. Up next, this local lady is having a ball teaching dance to the community. People spend on average a third of their time online watching videos. A single minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. Adding professional video to marketing emails can boost click-through rates by as much as 300%. So leverage the power of video. Consider NCTV 17's production services for your marketing needs. Contact us to begin the conversation today. It's her heart. It's her heart, it's her professionalism, it's her empathy. Marie Bartolota is talking about her ballroom dance instructor, Vanda Varnay Garcia. We've met Vanda before. Her daughter, Natalia Garcia, is a sensational dancer who, since we last saw her, has won a national event in July and joined a professional dance company. But this story is about Vanda and her dance studio, Dance Spot of DuPage. I'm doing this for the love of dance, in my eyes, it's not a business. It's just a blessing that money comes with it. But I'm doing it because I believe in it fully and I love building relationships with the students. And that sentiment goes both ways. Fonda took over Dance Spot of DuPage a year and a half ago and her dancers have nothing but glowing things to say. Fonda uh, is just the sweetest woman and uh, she never takes a day off. She, uh, uh, you, know, you know, we come every week, uh, once or twice a week and uh, she puts all her heart into it, so. John Neer has learned much in his five years taking lessons from Vonda. The goal? To learn, to learn. Um, I dance socially, so uh, when we go out, we kind of like to show off a little bit. A lot of people just go out and freestyle dance, and we get on the floor, and we kind of know what we're doing, and it looks pretty cool. And while that certainly has its perks, the class does go deeper than simply learning styles of ballroom dance. So it becomes more like not only uh, a social activity that you can share, they actually started to bond together, they go out dancing together, they have parties together, or we have parties here. In fact, those parties in the studio are hosted by Vonda once a month and consist of a single dance, a freestyle dance, and a potluck. The people who are actually staying, the people who are actually loving ballroom dancing as a sport, as a hobby, they have passion for dancing, they believe in dancing, her students certainly get that sense as well. Once on the floor, life's worries soon melt away. When you're here, you're, you're fo totally focused on the dance. And one of my other friends mentioned that too, that when, I, um, when you're here, you think only about the dance and other things seem to fall away. While the typical student is over the age of 50, Vonda does teach in local high schools, which is how Wheaton Academy's Fiona Fromm found the studio. We've been coming recently on um, Monday nights, there's a teen dance night. So some of my friends from my old school and a few new ones um, have been showing up for those. So how does she sell ballroom dancing to high school students? It depends if it's a boy or a girl. <laughs> um, with the boys, I usually defer to my brother to help convince. Um, but I, I'll tell them how much fun it is and the fact that we can pick some of the styles that we um, can work on. Miss Fonda's like super flexible with different people. And once they come, they typically come back. 
which can also be said for dancers of all ages. My students are loyal to me, which I'm very lucky, and then they enjoy it, so they share it with some people and they come and then they stay. A few from the social media, but I'm, I'm not the best with social media. But who needs social media when your dancers never leave and even bring the occasional friend to do the jitterbug? I'm Kevin Jackman. And if you have an idea for a sports story feature, you can let us know at newstips at nctv17.com. Once again, NCTV 17 put on its own game show fundraiser, Game On, and our own Christine Lena was there as the teams battled it out for the win. Eight players, two teams, one host, and a live studio audience. It all adds up to NCTV 17's game show, Game On, and takes place right here at Center Stage Theater. Team Late Night took on Team Primetime in Episode 9's sitcom Showdown. <laughs> That is correct. Team Late Night's Golden Girls had Captain Jackie Claremont from Naperville School District 203, who is joined by T2 Asset Management's Paul Novak, Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce's Kaylin Riswald, and Bernicke Law Firm's James Bernicke. I would completely do it again. If you asked me um, before the sh game show today, I don't know, but it was so much fun doing it. They took on Team Primetime Simpsons Family, who was captained by Amanda Kunzer from Edgewood Clinical Services. On her couch was Keith Hartenberger from Edward Elmhurst Health, Mari Rodriguez from Dynacom, and Colton Antos from Codeverse. I got to tell you, that, that was the perfect show for me to be on because of the TV and because, again, I, I also have insomnia, so I watch a lot of Nick at Night. They all battled head-to-head -head in sitcom-themed challenges, hosted by 95.9 The River's Danielle Tafano. Such high energy, such enthusiasm, and they work so great together. I have to say that this episode, maybe more so than any other episode, the teams really got together, they were practicing, they were studying, and so I was kind of cool to see that all come together. To find out who won, stay tuned to NCTV 17 on Monday, November 11th when the full show premieres. Then the episode will air for the rest of the month on Channel 17. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Christine Lena. And that's what's happening right here in your neighborhood, Naperville. We'll see you next week. Until then, you can catch up on local news by signing up for our NCTV 17 news update delivered right to your inbox Monday through Friday. Sign up information is right on our website, nctv17.com. This week's Naperville News 17 is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. This program is partially funded by a grant from the City of Naperville.